Digest. Dramatic stories from the pages of America's most popular magazine. Presented by the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers. I'm Hugh Riley, welcoming you to another in our series of exciting stories straight from the pages of Reader's Digest. This series comes to you through the courtesy of the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers, who take great pleasure in bringing you this program. Have you driven a 55 Studebaker yet? First time you do, something big and exciting happens to you. You get a completely new concept of power. Studebaker action power. For instance, watch this getaway. Smooth and fast. That truck is really moving. But watch. In the clear. Thanks to Studebaker reserve power that makes all driving safer. You won't be entering races, but your Studebaker could. Watch them go. It doesn't matter what model Studebaker you pick. President, commander, champion. Every Studebaker engine is packed with power. But power is just part of what you discover in a Studebaker. You find really distinctive good looks. This is a beautiful car. And that's true inside as well as outside. Smart new fabrics and color schemes, rich, deep comfort and really surprising headroom and space to make travel a new pleasure. Get the facts at first hand. Right away, see your Studebaker dealer. Look over the car yourself. Once you see all that Studebaker offers, you'll make it your next car. And here's some real news. The 55 Studebaker is priced right down with the lowest. You bet it's the smart car to buy. And now for our story. A city councilman's salary isn't big, and at first the gifts were small, like the favors received. From the pages of Reader's Digest, the revealing, frightening history of the anatomy of graft. This is the case history of Victor Martin, a young attorney who veered toward a political career with a sincere determination to work for cleaner and better government. Little did he realize how difficult it is for a public servant to avoid the pitfalls of graft and corruption. And Proposition 2, which would raise the pay of municipal judges, is losing by a margin of 2 to 1. And now I notice Mayor Hanley is in the studio, so while we're waiting for further election returns, let's hear a few words from him. Mayor Hanley. Thank you. How's it adding up, Dan? Well, it looks to me as if Victor's just about in. And Dad's never stuck himself out on a limb like that before. No matter how we come out, Mr. Leary, I want you to know that I'll always be thankful for your help. Well, I only passed on to you what it took me years to learn. Man can't be around politicians all his life without learning some of their tricks. Uh-oh, looks like we're going to get some more returns. Councilman, 5th District, with 80% of the precincts reporting. Victor Martin continues to build up... Oh, here's a bulletin. Ben Conklin has just conceded Martin's election. Congratulations. Thank you. Nick, you're just going to have to stop on your way downtown and speak to that repairman about the refrigerator. Was that thing out of order again? Yes. We need a new one. In fact, we need so many new things around here that... Oh, I'm sorry. I know, Dan. Look, if anyone calls, I'll be back at the office about 11.30. I'm due at the Gamecock Cafe. Joe Barron wants to see me. Goodbye, Dina. Bye. Get up. Hello, Vic. Hi, Joe. Come in. You're right on the dot. How about a drink? No, no, it's too early for me. How are things down at City Hall? I'm so new, I'm still feeling my way around. I knew you'd be elected, Vic. Mr. Leary never backs a losing horse. When he asked me for dough for your campaign, I knew it wasn't money wasted. I didn't know you contributed. Thanks. That's all right. Look, Vic, do you think if I put an overhead sign outside and bring more business into the place? It's not a bad idea. Then you'll fix it for me? Fix it? All you have to do is go to City Hall, fill out an application for $25, you've got a permit. Not me. You handle it for me, Vic. There's 300 bucks. If that isn't enough, say so. What do you want to shell out all that money, Joe? You're entitled to the permit. You'd be surprised. 
The precinct police lieutenant will wonder if it's an obstruction. He'll decide it isn't for a couple of hundred bucks. And a sidewalk inspector will rule it's an accident hazard, another couple of hundred bucks. And so it goes. Before I'm through shelling out, a $25 sign will cost me 900 bucks instead of 300. All right. I'll get you a sign. But I don't want a nickel for it. Of course you don't, Vic. No, no, Joe. It isn't necessary. You're not being smart, Vic. You're a politician now. And going against the tide won't sit well with the rest of the boys. You don't want to be a flash in the pan, good for just one term, do you? Of course I don't. Then toss around what I said. Ask your father-in-law. Goodbye, Joe. Joe Barron shouldn't have done it. We can't take it. We have to send it back. You're just being oversensitive, Vic. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. Well, I'm sorry, Jean. I can't see it your way. Can't see what her way, Vic? Joe Barron. He sent us a new refrigerator. With all the latest gadgets. It's just an appreciation of the things you've done for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe told me about it. In fact, I suggested the refrigerator deal to him. Since you wouldn't take money. Well, money or an icebox, what's the difference? I'm still being paid off. Look, Vic, answer me this. Is Joe's gift depriving the city of any money it's entitled to? Well, maybe you've got a point there. I think you're being confused. Confused between accepting graft and being paid for a service. How's that new subdivision of yours, Mr. Oliver? Okay, we're getting along. I'm having trouble with the city putting in sewers. Why'd you talk to Vic Martin? He's a pretty good guy. Oh, can a fellow do business with him? He'll listen. Good, I'd like to talk to him. Okay. There. How does that look? Fine. Just fine. It was uh, certainly nice of Mr. Oliver to rent us this house so cheaply. Too nice. Just don't worry about it, Vic. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. That's probably the man with the new carpet. Is uh, Mr. Martin at home? Yes. Uh, will you come in? Thank you. Vic, this uh, gentleman would like to speak to you. Gorman, Deputy Fire Chief. Glad to know you. I voted for you in the last election. I hope you don't regret it. I hope so, too. That's why I dropped over. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Martin, I wanted to talk to you about those tires that the council bought for us. Samson and company delivered them yesterday. I understand that the lot of them set the city back around $30,000. Is that right? Just about. We thought we were getting very cheap. Well, nothing is cheap that isn't good. You mean there's something wrong with them? Well, for one thing, they're not first-grade heavy-duty. They're recaps. You can, um, well, you can pick the pieces off of them like nail polish. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I, I don't get it. I mean, just a few of them. All of them. How anyone could have bought tires like that for the fire department is a... Uh, whose idea was it? We all went along with it. Before I voted, I, I made some inquiries and I was assured that the firm we were dealing with was a very reliable one. Who told you that? Councilman Jenkins, I'm sorry to say. Well, Councilman Jenkins better guess again. Those tires are treacherous things to put on a fire apparatus. I wouldn't want to be responsible. There's no reason you should be. I'm very happy you brought this to my attention. I'm going to do something about this. This is no idle promise. You can tell your boys I'm going to have this whole matter aired before the council first thing tomorrow. Fine. You know, that's the kind of talk I really like to hear. As long as it's not just lip service. It isn't. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. Good day. Fred Jenkins knew this tire deal was crooked all along, and I voted along with him on his say-so. 
whether he knew whether it was or wasn't. Why do you have to be the one to carry the flag for the fire department? Why do you have to be the one to bring it up on the floor of the council? Let one of the other councilmen be the brave Boy Scout. Forgetting what your father told me, there's a line between service and graft. This is graft. But you don't gain anything by it. Only Jenkins does. But I voted along with him, didn't I? If I'm to shut my eyes to what's been done, then I'm just as guilty and dishonest as he is. What do you want me to do, Jean? Just throw all my self-respect into the ash can? I just don't want you to be rash. I don't want to see you making enemies. You have a future, Vic. I don't want to see you throw it away. Look, darling, there's an old saying that still goes. You can't fight City Hall. Today was an exciting day in the city council when Councilman Victor Martin sensationally exposed the double dealing of S.J. Sampson and company, who had dumped second grade and faulty tires on the fire department to the tune of $30,000. Upon Martin's motion, Sampson was ordered to return the money to the city treasurer and the contract will be awarded to a bona fide bidder. Here's a news clip. It shows Martin leaving the council chamber this morning, surrounded by constituents who are congratulating him for his courage and forthrightness. Yeah? Councilman Jenkins to see you. Have him come in, please. Hi, Fred. Something on your mind? Yeah. Just you remember this, Vic. When one politician calls a cop on another, he'd better be pretty sure of his past. We're not all lily white. Most of us are vulnerable. What is that supposed to mean? You're smart. You figure it out. When a politician's been hurt, he has a long memory. How's our fearless young public servant this morning? Okay, I guess. You don't look it. Jenkins been telling you the facts of life? Yeah, but I don't scare easily. Fine. Only I hope you're not whistling in the dark. While your friends are telling you what a good Joe you are, the boys in the council don't see it that way. Next time you ask them for a favor, they'll tell you how sorry they are they can't put it over for you. That's already happened. It'll happen again. They'll work overtime trying to figure ways to wash you up. You never met Cal Iverson, did you? No. I had a letter from Cal not so long ago. He said he thought you'd go a long ways. That's his way of saying he'd push you. The green light from Cal is all it takes. But that was before you made your famous speech in the council. And why are you telling me about this now? Because Cal happens to be in town. He flew in from the state capitol this morning. He's stopping at the Metropole. I had a long confab with him. Mightn't be too late. Too late for what? To square yourself. He'll see you in his suite, 8 o'clock. I'll be there. And when you meet Goliath, stop trying to be a little David. Or you mightn't get another chance. I know my way out. I can always make allowances for one mistake, Martin. But uh, don't be hoodwinked by all that flattery. Don't believe all those nice things you read about yourself. It won't pay the groceries to be a one-man team. I'm sure you'll find that out. And it won't pay off at the polls because the party's too well organized. Is that much clear? Very clear, Mr. Iverson. Thank you. How about you? I don't touch it. Vic, one more grandstand play and you'll never run for office again under the party banner. But what you did, I attribute to uh, growing pains. Had them myself when I was younger. You really want to stay in politics? Yes, I do. Then you do what you're told. No questions asked. But if you have any qualms or reservations, let's just shake hands and say it was nice meeting you. Well? I'd like a little time to think it over, sir. Sure, you think it over. But uh, it wouldn't take too much time if I were you. Right now, I'm looking for a man to run for the state assembly. We could cash in on all that publicity you've been getting. Make a virtue out of a vice. Make an asset out of your... Uh, Rashness. State Assembly, think it over. For the boys will want to know by Monday. Back with the councilman in just a moment. Here are three things you definitely don't need when you visit your nearby Studebaker dealer. You don't need glasses to see that Studebaker is the style leader. 
Those long, clean lines have won 34 international style awards. It's the most distinctive American car on the road today. And this low, glued-to-the-road design means safer, easier driving, too. Look at the new world of vision Studebaker gives you. Another thing you don't need is a big bag of money. This expensive-looking car with all its size and beauty, all its comfort and smartness and luxury, is actually priced with the lowest. That's right. You can own a Studebaker for the cost of the usual lowest-priced car. And you certainly don't need an oil well to run a Studebaker. This car gives you more miles per gallon of gas. And that's proved by Studebaker's second straight win of the mobile gas economy run sweepstakes. For all its power, Studebaker is the number one economy car. There's one thing you do need when you visit your Studebaker dealer. That's a half hour behind the wheel of a Studebaker. Driving it will prove it's the smart car to buy. Studebaker, so much better made, worth more when you trade. Your Studebaker dealer is the right man to see for good late model used cars too. Certified used cars, ask him about them. Now, let's continue with our TV Reader's Digest story, The Anatomy of Graph. got around, Governor Gladwell won't run again. That leaves the spot wide open. But there's a movement on to draft Vic for the job. Haven't you heard? Sure I've heard. I started it. With little help from me. Seriously, Jane, I've given this a lot of thought. I've already talked it over with your father. Who is better qualified to run? I've been the majority leader on the assembly floor. I've put through every important administration bill. I've... You don't have to sell me. I don't think it's going to take much selling anywhere. We've got one delegate after another lined up behind me. And in every county, one or two key delegates who are ready to go to work for me just as soon as they get the go sign. I know, they've told me. And the organization will be right behind you when the time comes. But you're four years too soon, Vic. Boys upstate want Greenwood this time, and I'm going along with them for party harmony. In fact, when we have our convention, I'd say you'd be just the man to put Greenwood in nomination. Where does that leave me? You're disappointed, huh? Yes, I am. I've created a new job for you, state tax authority. Tech? It could be important. Well, what do I know about taxes? We'll make Pat Kearney your chief deputy. He'll teach you the ropes. Look, Mr. Iverson, I've got ambitions. I'd be lost in the tax office. Well, it isn't as glamorous as the state capital, but it has its compensations. Play your cards right and you'll make a lot of friends. Waiter, check, please. We're looking forward to seeing you, et cetera, et cetera. You got a minute, boss? Surely. That'll be all, Miss Wingate. What is it, Pat? It's about that Nesbitt return. He's a friend of Cal Iverson's. Oh, then I'll give him all the breaks you can. Just make sure it's legal. Those plans for your new home? I just got them back from the architect. 325 Lakeview Drive. That's a good address. Nice to have such generous friends. How many rooms are going to be? It's getting bigger and bigger. Mrs. Martin's planning a rumpus room. <laughs> Will I see you again before you and Jean go to Hawaii? I don't think so. We're leaving Tuesday. Well, have a nice trip. It's good talking to you. Thank you. I better be running along. Well, Cal, I'd like to talk to you about something. You want to run for Congress? Is that it? Yeah. I've been thinking about it. I see. You'll find I've got a lot of support. I've been putting out feelers. And? Things look pretty good. Gene's father promised to handle the campaign and money's already coming in. And there isn't much left for us to talk about, is there? Well, there's the party support, of course. That's why I'm counting on you, Cal. You swing the machine for me and we're in. Haven't you forgotten something? Forgotten something? Baxter. He's been doing a bang-up job for us in Washington. And Baxter's a good party man. What do we do, throw him out? Things like that have been done before. Last time out, he barely came in. This time, he might even be beaten. 
Why don't you stick to the job you're doing, Vic? Let me call the shots. Hmm? I remain buried in this tax office. Look, Cal, I believe in timing. Right now, I could wrap up this congressional election. This is the year. Suppose the party's already given Baxter the green light. Suppose the machine won't back you. But you're the machine. All you have to do is say the word. I'm saying it. Stay where you are. Is that final? Final. My backing goes to Baxter. All right, then I'll have to go it alone. I don't want to run independently, but if I have to... You'll have to. Then you're going to see what a real campaign is like. I'll be watching. This is no idle talk. I have enough money pledged to see me through to a win. I might even capitalize on the fact that the Iverson machine isn't backing me. I'll be the people's choice. You might be sorry that you ever started this thing. Is it supposed to scare me? Well, you don't. If it's a fight you want, you'll get it. Have you ever been to Hawaii, Miss Wingate? No, I haven't. Oh, we had a wonderful time. You should go there. Would you tell Pat Kearney I'd like to see him, please? Well, he's not come in this morning. Hmm? That's funny. He cabled me to rush back on the double, and now he takes the morning off. What is it? He wants you to meet him at the Capitol Grill for lunch. Well, what's come up? Oh, what's so important? Well, I, I'd rather Mr. Kearney told you himself. Oh? And I didn't want to talk to you at the office. I'm not sure it isn't wired. Why? Right. We've had visitors, tea men, came in right after you sailed, practically took over the place. They seem to suspect something about that Nesbitt return. That's what put them on the track. Well, the only one I knew about Nesbitt were you, Miss Wingate, and Cal Iverson. Something smells. Well, he didn't come from me, and certainly not from Miss Wingate. That leaves Cal Iverson. That leaves Cal Iverson. Why would he want to double-cross you? Politics. Politics make people do some weird things. Maybe we're making too much of this. It may be just one of those routine checkups. They don't remove files when it's a routine checkup. You better have your answers ready when you face them. Do you think they found something incriminating? You know, I'm not what you'd call a tax authority. I've always depended pretty much on you. Presume that you would keep us within the law. Who's kidding who, Mr. Martin? I'm sure you'll find everything in good order. There are a few items we may want to talk over with you later. In the meantime, here are some questions we'd like to answer. For instance, we'd like to know the value of your home. See the canceled check for your car. Get an estimate on your wife's mink coat. Pardon me. Hello? Vic? Yes, dear. I'm just curious. What did Pat Kearney have to say? Look, dear, yeah, I'm busy now. Goodbye. Look, Mr. Martin, I'll leave this questionnaire with you. We'll pick it up later. Let's go, Earl. I got your message, Vic. It's good of you to come. I didn't think you would. I didn't think you'd have the guts. Let's talk fast. I'm not even sure it's sensible for me to be here. Then why did you come? Well, when one of our boys is in trouble. It worries you, doesn't it? Naturally. And believe me, Vic, if I could use my influence, get someone in Washington to help you, you know I'd do it. But Uncle Sam's a tough man to tangle with. Particularly when you... Haven't acted too smart. And I haven't been smart, have I? Or else I should have known that I couldn't get away with bucking your machine. And it was no accident that there was a leak to the Treasury Department, was there? That's politics, fellow. Your politics. When you say politics, it's a dirty word. And when you say it, it's clean, that it? No, I played it your way, I'm ashamed to say. That's why I'm here tonight, loathing myself. Wondering why I did it. Wondering... How I got off the track, wondering who's responsible. Why don't you grow up? Stop dreaming about the man you think you are and face the facts. You're exactly what you made of yourself. Nothing more, nothing less. You did your best, but it wasn't enough. Now comes the payoff. You're very good with that straight from the shoulder talk. I noticed that the first time we met. Diamond in the rough. 
Take it or leave it. You pegged me as a man without any character. You played me for a sucker and I fell for it. But tonight I'm not fooled. Tonight I see you for what you are. You're an evil, angry man. Skulking in the background. Fearful, villainous. You're an enemy of the people. That's pretty big talk for a man who didn't have brains enough to stay out of the rain. When did this big change take place in you? When you discovered there was a warrant out for your arrest? You were willing enough to play along when things were going fine. I didn't hear you complain then. When I realized what I was, I was, I was a young man. I was full of ideals. I, I, I wanted to be a real public servant. You were taking favors long before you ever met me. Well, you were a pushover for anyone who put his hand in his pocket. So stop kidding yourself. How do we happen? People like you and me, how do we get so far ahead of ourselves? I'm not ahead of myself. You're the one that's in trouble, not me. You know something, Cal Iverson? It's the people of this country who are in trouble. The people who elected me and the people who trust their political machines to you. That kind of talk makes me sick. The people get what they ask for. They get what they want. And they want men like me to run their government for them so they won't have to think about it. Well, then I run it. I give them the kind of office holders they deserve. The kind of service they demand. They got no kick coming in, neither have I. A few months ago, I might have believed that. But tonight, I don't. Tonight, I think the people deserve better than me. And better than you. And I hope and pray that they'll be discerning enough to see through us and destroy us before we destroy them. It's a very pretty speech. I'll remember it every election day. Uh, this check should cover your expenses and plane fare out of the country. My advice is to leave tonight. Judge Julian Butterfield this morning for malfeasance in the conduct of his office surprised the court by pleading guilty and throwing himself on its mercy. Well, that crook certainly got what was coming to him. That's right. He always had his hand out. Do you know anything about that new councilman? Tom Ellis? No, why? My license is coming up for renewal. You think you can do business with him? Well, we'll soon find out. Before we say goodbye... Here's a glimpse of next week's story from the Reader's Digest. Human nature through a rear view mirror. You take me. I got a customer, I don't just sit there like a wooden Indian. I'm sociable, I, I show an interest. You'd be surprised what you can pick up about human nature just keeping your eyes and your ears peeled. What, am I gonna write a book or something? Look, I suppose you'd be happier cooped up in an office somewhere, some gazebo cracking a whip over you all day. We'll see the complete story next week. This is Hugh Riley, your host for the Studebaker Packard Corporation and its dealers, saying thanks for being with us, and until next week, goodbye.